Hi guys, XPC on 8 here. This new video is about ZBrush. But before we start, we have something else to do. As you can see, it's still uh, 3ds Max because I forgot simply to implement this last piece. Sometimes when you are too focused on details, you forgot about uh, really important stuff. So um, I think it's uh, a good lesson. We should always be mindful about the blockout. If I had put more energy into my blockout and stick to my blockout, uh, this wouldn't happen. But it's not really a big deal because I saw it and I'm fixing it. So I wanted to to let it in this new video in order to show you sometimes it's okay to miss some part if you correct it so I'm correcting it and uh, then we will uh, soon be in the brush do you guys remember about the bottle and the rope around it I made a mistake the first time because my rope was too high poly so this time when I am working in this handle my spline I try to stick with only a really few points that allows me to have a better control on my topology so I'm trying some few things in order to have the proper round shape and now I'm almost done I'm gonna use here a plugin that I made in order to export my UVs at the same time as my OBJ. Like that in the brush I will be able to retrieve my polygroups thanks to my UVs made automatically with my plugin. Right now you can see me rounding uh, objects in the brush. Obviously uh, it's because I kept my UVs, transform them into polygroups and with the help of edge border I can have I can protect my borders and still be able to smooth my object. So now it's time to sculpt a little and try to to preserve the style of the original art. That's why I'm loading right now the concept art directly in the brush with spotlight so I'm using a lot the trim dynamic in order to have a flat angles and also daemon standard in order to make those uh, harsh lines sculpting is it's really fun but you got to be careful because it's easy to implement too much detail and actually screw up the relation between the concept art and what you're doing. It would have been really easy in the brush to put some metal dents everywhere, but that's not what the concept art is about. Now I'm about to draw in polypaint the, the skull, but it's not very important because I will make the texture and everything in another video this is just to know where i will be putting my details my actual sculpted details this time again i will put too much time and effort in order to have a good skull maybe because i was preparing myself for the polypent but anyhow you don't have to put that much effort just to know where the skull will be. I should have just roughly done a sketch of the skull and then move on. Here it's exactly the same. I'm doing some details for the label but it will not be in the final uh, object at the end. It's, it's just polypent, which is quite different from having real UV uh, texture. 
the bottle was quite simple. It was just a question of rounding the corners and also put a little bit of smooth in order to be sure to have a good transition. Now I'm working on the rocks. My first method will be to put some details and try to reinforce the effect of this detail by putting more subtle details. Here in this part, I will try to make a, a block out of the shape, but I will quickly realize that it was a mistake to do it in this order because I will have to erase all the details that I've done. It's really important to have a good knowledge of what you're doing and why. Because like that, you can change your strategy in order to better suit your purpose and have a, a faster way of working. So right now, I'm doing again the, the, the detail of the side of the rock because I had to overwrite what I did. So in this one, I'm doing the opposite. I'm roughing up the shape in order to have my block out. And after that, I will put real close-up details. Here, I'm using some brush already made for rocks. And also, I'm using, I'm using the sizzle brush with a lazy radius. Like that, I can draw straight lines. After that, I will add some more details and pass to the and switch to the other rock. I'm trying here another technique. I'm using the smooth modifier in order to have less texture on the rock because on the concept art, it's more flat. Here I'm using the mask tool in order to be sure to not impact the other side and I use a pinch brush to close uh, the gap between uh, the edges. Again here I'm making a rough pass and then I use the smooth modifier in order to have less texture. Of course, using the flat brush, it's also a good technique in order to have less texture and flatter sides. Here I'm watching my object and then go back to, to detail. I think it's important to go back to the overall aspect of your model to be sure you are following the right track. Once you have your topology, the brush is actually a really good software in order to put your, your details. But you have to be careful because some details might be simpler to place in Substance Painter after when you are painting your object. So, in the brush, you need to stick to some real deformation that will impact your topology. And for small details, you can do them in the brush, but you also can uh, implement them after in Substance Painter. So it's up to you and the, the software that you're more comfortable with. Now I'm putting the last details on the top part of the cauldron and then I will work on the mushroom. To be honest, the mushrooms are a really important part of the design but I will spend way too much time doing something that won't be actually seen in the final object. Like under the mushroom, I will put a lot of details even though sometimes it's a good thing, but under the mushroom, it's really not necessary. I will let you appreciate how far I went into the details that nobody will be able to see. Uh, it's a little bit ridiculous. So next time, I will be sure to put 
more time in some part of the mesh that will be more seen by the player. Here I'm using clay build up in order to have the right texture on the bottom part of the mushroom. I think uh, clay build up is a really good tool in order to make a rough shape and then you can either smooth it or use a smooth modifier. Here I'm trying to mask the part I don't want to affect and modelize everything I want I want to. That's the part uh, that I put too much time. Here I'm still using clay build up and then smooth it. It's actually important to alternate between the smooth in and the smooth out. I mean when you hold the alt uh, keyboard button, it will uh, do the opposite of, of uh, adding a geometry. So like that you have peak and valid. Now that all my shapes are done, I will implement the round part. I don't know how to say it in English, but uh, it's actually pretty simple. You just need to mask it and inflate it in the modifier panel, in the deformation panel. I put a little bit of poly paint just for the fun. I think sometimes it can help you visualize more uh, of your objects. Here I made a mistake. I should have duplicated my mushroom before uh, putting those uh, bubbles, I don't know, those round shape because now I need to erase them and put them again. So I will duplicate for the oppo opposite side and then do some new uh, round shape. I'm very pleased with the final uh, look of the mushroom and then I will merge them. After that you need to be sure that the connection between the two mushrooms is proper. After that, I'm gonna put the mushroom that I duplicate on the opposite side and it will be done. So thank you guys for watching and the next video will be about retopologize all the objects. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.